So now we're going to look at the constant propagation example and its transfer function to check whether they are monotonic or not. So if you recall, uh, for the uh, constant propagation example, uh, one of the formulations of transfer functions involved four transfer functions. The first one was across the statement which was assigning a constant to the variable x, in which case the transfer function was if the input value is top, then the output value is also top, otherwise it is the constant c which is being assigned. Uh, for the case where the x is not assigned to, we just use the identity transfer function fx equals x, the out is just a copy of n. Uh, for the case where x is uh, assigned to something else which is not, uh, not a constant and neither a function of x, only x, so maybe x colon equals y plus z or something like that. In this case we just say that if the input value is top then the output value is also top. Otherwise, uh, the output value is bottom, okay? And for this case where, uh, the special case where, you know, we wanted to cater for things like x colon equals x plus one or something like that, if the RHS of the assignment is purely a function of x, then if the input value is, uh, is a constant, then we want that the output value should be the, this expression E evaluated on that particular constant. So the corresponding transfer function is this fourth transfer function, which is, if the input value is top, then the output value is top. If the input value is bottom, then the output value is bottom. But if the input value is a constant C, uh, and and this the kind of the, the 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 expression on the right is of the form x plus k for some k greater than or equal to zero, then uh, the output value is E C. If the expression is not of the form x plus k, then we just say we fall back to the second transfer function, which is going to give bottom for a non-top input value. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, this is a review. I mean, I just quickly reviewed the transfer functions for the constant propagation example for a single variable x. But now we want to check whether all these transfer functions follow the monotonicity property or not. So we can uh, take each transfer function one by one and see whether it follows the monotonicity property, which means that for all x1 comma x2 in the domain of the transfer function, if x1 is less than or equal to x2, does that also imply that fx1 is less than or equal to fx2? Now, if I look at this transfer function, uh, it is either going to re return a top value or a constant value. So I need to do case analysis and say, okay, what if x1 is top and x2 is top and, and so on. And so I can build some kind of a truth table which says, okay, if x2 is top and x1 could be anything, which I'm representing with this underlined x, which means x, x1 could be either top or it could be bottom or it could be some constant c, then fx2 will definitely be top. Right, because x2 is top, so fx2 will be top. That's what the transfer function says. Uh, and fx1 could be some arbitrary value. It could be another constant, uh, which could be the same constant x, or it could be uh, the bottom value or whatever. Uh, irrespective, the fact that fx2 is top and everything is less than or equal to top, we know that whatever comes here in fx1 is definitely going to be less than or equal to top. So for the case where x2 is top, it's clear that uh, the monotonicity property holds because fx1 is going to be less than or equal to fx2 because fx2 is also going to be top. Okay, now let's look at the other example, a case. Well, the other case is what if x1 is bottom? If x1 is bottom uh, and x2 is some constant k, then fx1 and fx2 both are going to evaluate to c because we just substitute bottom, you just get c or if you substitute some constant k for x, then also you get c. And so again, c is less than or equal to c, it's actually equal to c, so it's also less than or equal to c. So again, for this case where uh, x1 is bottom and x2 is some constant k, uh, this monotonicity property is satisfied. And the only uh, kind of remaining case is when both x1 and x2 are equal. So let me say that they are both x, then both fx1 and x, fx2 will also be equal. They could be, diff uh, they could be different from the original val input value x, but uh, they're going to be equal and that also means that fx1 will be less than or equal to fx2 because it's actually equal to fx2. And I'm, I'm claiming that, you know, these, this, this truth table that I've drawn with these kind of uh, placeholders called x uh, kind of represents all possible inputs uh, that that x1 or x2 could hold or all possible cases, you can check that for yourself.
Okay, so similarly, we need to check all the other three functions and that's how I'm going to check whether this, uh, uh, this DFA framework is monotonic or not. So for example, I'm going to check the second fu uh, function and the second function is not very different. The only difference here is that instead of uh, C, I'm getting um, bottom here. So uh, just fix this, okay. So instead of saying that if X is not equal to top, then the output value should be C. Now the output, output value is bottom and the truth table basically remains similar except that instead of C here, I get bottom. And once again, you can check that the transfer function remains monotonic because for all possible inputs, uh, the out, uh, which are related or for all possible pair of inputs, which are related by the less than equal to operator in our semi-lattice, the outputs are also related by the same less than equal to operator. Okay, uh, now let's look at the third function. This is actually the easiest one. It's just the identity function and we need to show that if x1 is less than or equal to x2, then is fx1 less than or equal to fx2. Recall that fx1 is just x1 and fx2 is just x2. So indeed, if x1 is less than or equal to x2, then x1 is less than or equal to x2. So uh, this is, you know, this is just uh, a trivial, uh, trivial proof. So indeed, the third function is also monotonic. Now, now we come to the last and the most complicated function, which is the fourth function. And we need to check whether uh, the fourth function satisfies the monotonicity property. And once again, I'm going to do a case analysis. And, and once again, I'm going to draw a truth table. And the first, I mean, once again, I've drawn a condensed truth table where I'm using these placeholders called x underlined x. And the, the cases that I consider are if x2 is top and x1 is some arbitrary value, which could be either k or bottom uh, or top, then, uh, you know, then fx2 is also top. If you can, I mean, that's just coming from the first uh, condition here. So because fx2 is top, irrespective of what fx1 is, it will always be less than equal to fx2. And so in this, the first row basically uh, is indeed satisfying our monotonicity condition. Let's look at the second case where x1 is bottom and x2 is some arbitrary value, which could be bottom, k or top. In this case, fx1 will always be bottom and that's coming from the second condition. And because everything, bottom is less than equal to everything, so it doesn't matter what comes here, uh, you know, this is again going to satisfy our monotonicity condition. Finally, if both x1 and x2 are equal, then fx1 and fx2 are also going to be equal. And so that's, uh, that's going to also be satisfy our monotonicity property. Now you can check for yourself whether these, this condensed truth table actually covers all the possible cases for pairs of inputs where uh, the inputs are related by the less than equal to operation and whether the corresponding outputs are related by the uh, less than equal to operator as well. And this is how you would, uh, you know, want to check the monotonicity property of the DFA framework that you are defining for yourself.